Hello to all my friends and family and welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. I'm just down near a park close to my house by a creek and uh, we had a lot of rain yesterday and the creek was just running and very very full and quite flooded. So I thought I'd come down today and uh, try and get another piece of the action. But as you can see today, the water is peaceful and it looks to the untrained eye that it hasn't rained at all and there hasn't been any storms over the past couple of days. And you'd almost think that I was a bit of a liar with the story that I was saying. But uh, what I want to do today is um, welcome you to this sub-series that I'm putting together entitled All That I've Learned From Anthony Robbins Over The Years and it's a tribute series where I'm piecing together adding vlog by vlog day by day to a library that I'm trying to build up of 365 videos. Today's video will be number 75 and I'm proud to say that I'm more than two tenths of my way to uh, reaching my target and there's plenty of material. I'm not worried not one iota. I know that um, once I set myself a plan, once I take a challenge on board, then step by step I will contribute to it and hopefully if I've got good health I'll be able to uh, get there at some point. There's something crossing the river there, I don't know what it is. A lizard. A lizard just swam from one side to the other. So I think that lizard is one of those uh, water dragons, I think they're called. And this whole area is uh, characterised by these water dragons. But geez, they can move. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to put together a tribute series to Anthony Robbins, given that about 30 years ago, I went to one of the, his um, first seminars that he hosted here in Sydney, one of his first UPWs in 1994, and I followed up again the year later. I read his first two uh, uh, groundbreaking books, Awaken the Giant Within and Unlimited Power. And I've also immersed myself um, for quite a while in his tape series, Power Talk and Power Talk 2, which I remember sliding those tapes into the tape deck of my car and looking forward to driving to work in the morning and driving home in the evening where I could just get my hit, get my... Uh, my sugar hit of uh, motivational talk and then look at implementing it wherever I could in my life. And since then I've set up a YouTube channel which is arguably one of the biggest in the world in terms of volume and variety of personal development material, be it book summaries, be it life experiences. I've got 1,652 or 53, but well over 650 videos in my library. And as I say to my daughters and granddaughters, if at some time of your life you care to listen to one video a week, it will take you over 30 years to get through 
my channel to get through my library of empowering personal development uh, life hacks. So what I want to do today is focus on something which I guess out of all the things that Anthony Robbins talks about, this is probably the most interesting and this is, I guess, where he is at his absolute finest. So I know that I'll struggle to get through this section here because I know that it's he and only he who are absolute world champions at this material. But I'll do my best and at least capture it and document it for future generations to be able to enjoy at least my version of what I've learnt and how I've applied it and the examples and experiences that I can use to talk about. So Anthony Robbins makes a profound statement and he did it again at UPW this time around where I went in 2023 with my daughter Catherine and he said that beliefs and values control everything in your life. What you believe, what you truly believe and what you truly value and when you combine those two together uh, the actions that you do and the path that you take and the interpretation you place and the weighting you place on your life experiences will shape your life and shape how you experience life, how you enjoy it, how you hate it, and also influence others around you. But he says that in our lives, what's going to happen is we're going to experience quite a bit of conflict throughout the world and throughout our days. And that conflict is normal. There's nothing unique about this conflict. And Anthony Robbins says that conflict has always been a part of humanity because we all see things differently. We all experience things differently. We all think about things and judge things differently, says the big man. And the reason for this is quite simple, is that we're all going to live a completely different life. No two people who have ever lived on the planet are ever going to experience the same lifetime. We're going to experience a different past. And for many reasons, we're born in different times and spaces. Uh, we live in different families. We live in different environments. Even by living in the same house, you're going to have a different experience. Um, it's just going to be absolutely different because um, what happens to you is not going to be happening to your brother or sister, your father, your mother, or other people, even though you're in the same room, because you're going to be focusing on different things. You're going to be weighing up different things. You're going to be um, um, worrying about different things. You're going to be obsessing about different things. And that's what's beautiful about life. And as Anthony Robbins says, that we are all different from each other. God makes us all different, just like he makes every tree different in height, in shape, in color, in texture, in species. He makes every person different. He makes every house different. Everything is different. Wherever you look, there is variety. 
and similarly he makes people different and he makes people's lives different at the same time as well so that we can have a different experience of creation we can have a different relationship with God we can have a unique and a different relationship with God and we can um, enjoy all of creation in a way that is unique to us we get a lifetime and in that lifetime we're going to have multiple experiences and it's up to us to extract the very very best from those experiences and to see and to understand, as Anthony Robbins says, that life doesn't happen to you. Life happens for you. So whatever happens in your life is for your benefit. It's going to teach you something. It's going to give you perspective to be able to enjoy your life and to compare and contrast your experiences to that of others. We all get to live and to enjoy and to experience different slithers of reality. Nobody other than Jesus and other than God gets to live the full spectrum of life. Nobody but Jesus and is able to be all-knowing, all-present and uh, all-loving. I guess you can also add in there. Um, and only he is able to be in all places at all times. But the rest of us get to live snippets of reality. As I said before, we're going to live a different past. And that's for sure and for certain. Even if you're a twin, an identical twin born at the same time, even if you are a Siamese twin fused at the hips, you're going to live a different past, a different present, and a different future. For example, this present moment, we're all experiencing at the same time. I am where I am and you're somewhere else. You're going to be experiencing something different at this instant where I am here and you're somewhere else. And as you can see, where I am at the moment, nobody else is here. So I'm experiencing this slither of reality at this time of the day just like I experienced another sliver of reality yesterday where the river here, the creek, was running and was a lot more exciting to the eye than what it is today. But we, what we need to understand is that each of those differences that we get to enjoy in life are for our goodness are uh, for our um, um, indulgence, are uh, for our enjoyment. But it's up to us to be grateful and to look at things, look at everything that's happening in our lives with gratitude. As I mentioned yesterday on the YouTube channel that I talked about, the YouTube episode, Anthony Robbins says that everybody's life um, on the balance is very very good is excellent everybody has a great life but the problem is is that along the road along the road of life when we experience things we experience lots and lots of good things and we experience a lot of things which are just average and not notable and every now and then we do experience some negative aspects and elements 
And what happens is some people tend to hold on to those negative things. They grab it with their ten fingers. They grab it with their two hands. They hug it close to their body with their two arms. And they keep that story ruminating over and over and over again in their lives. And it's quite sad to think that when you look at the statistics and science has been able to talk about this and to inform us that for every negative that happens to us in our lifetime, uh, essentially you need at least 10 other positives to neutralize that negative which is a, a real um, hurdle for most people, especially if all they do is recall and focus and remember all the negative things that have happened and have um, accentuated them, have magnified them and made them bigger, uglier and worse than, than what they actually were. I was speaking to somebody the other day, I was speaking to my uncle Jimmy, who was in the hospital there doing his chemotherapy, and he's doing well, he's a very brave man, and he was saying that even though he's in hospital and he's ill and he has his challenges, he just wants to get out of the hospital as quickly as he can because he sees other people in the hospital who are much worse than what he is. And he says to himself something beautiful, that he's grateful for the challenges that he currently has, because things could be much, much worse. And he could be like some of the other people that he sees in hospital. And, um, and you know, he feels very, very sorry for. So getting back to the theme of this vlog today, Anthony Robbins says that beliefs and values control everything that happen in our lives. Um, and a lot of the beliefs and a lot of the values that we hold near and dear to our hearts aren't necessarily ours. A lot of them have been inherited through our family, through our environment, through our school, through our culture, through our friends and family, uh, because everybody has their values and their beliefs, and they themselves have inherited a lot of those from their environments. So uh, when you get three or four or 10 or 20 people together in the one place at the one time, chances are that all of those people there have a myriad of beliefs and values and trying to find some commonality between all of those people is really really difficult if not impossible um, i just notice amongst us greeks the greek orthodox you know we're all greek or we claim to be greek we claim to be greek orthodox christians um, and yet even within the same family you can get three siblings who hold completely different views, beliefs and values about their culture because what, what has happened along the way is that they've focused on different things, they've applied weighting to different elements and they have different perspectives and different views even though they may have 
been raised in the same family, sitting around the same table with the same parents, the same uncles and aunts, going to the same school, going to the same church, having the same or similar circles of friends and relatives, and yet they can be so different to the point where you think they're from a different planet. And this is where Anthony Robbins talks about rules conflict. And he says that our beliefs, the things that we hold as certain in our heart and in our lives, impact everything we see and everything that we process and store in our minds, in our hearts. And it is a key driver to our worldview and how we see the world. Lots of people end up fighting, and you see this with kids. I see my granddaughters at the moment, Annabelle and Elizabeth. They fight over different things. And when they are with other children, they'll fight with other kids about different things. And when we get family over, the adults will have, as I said before, different opinions and different views on things. And we've got different rules. And what Anthony Robbins says, if you, he says is, if you want to understand where conflict comes from, what you need to do is to look closely at the rules that people apply and you'll find that there is some incongruence in the rules. And I guess for most people, when you get married, that's when you start to find out how these different rules apply. So what we're saying is that, you know, you find somebody, you fall in love, you get married, and during that courting process, you don't tend to spend too much time focusing on what they do and how they do it. You're just happy to be with them all the time. But what happens is that with time, as time progresses, you start to see that they do things a little bit differently to how you do it. They communicate in different ways. They cook in different ways. Their expectations are based on different um, assumptions. And it's only when you realise how different you really are um, that you wonder how you even became a, a couple in the first place. And this is one of the challenges that everybody needs to work through. Um, and as I say, you now we're different for each other. Anthony Robbins always talks about the fact that we're dis different from each other so that we can be different for each other, so that we can complement and supplement each other's strengths and weaknesses with our strengths and they can complement us, of course, with our weaknesses. And that's how families have always been able to work, live and survive. And that's how relationships also um, work to a certain extent. So it's all about the rules that people have and people keep and the standards that one has because if you try and live your life to a higher standard, then you're going to have rules that are going to support that higher standard. And uh, once again, the challenge that people have is that they all want to live um, to certain standards and those standards may not be all that well communicated 
to others in the family or the group because living to higher standards means higher effort, means more work needs to be done and not everybody is prepared to invest in the higher standard or the higher work and that's where you have breakdowns in society, breakdowns in family, where some people follow the rules and other people don't even bother following the rules. And we saw this amplified during the pandemic when we had shutdowns and some people abided by it and other people didn't give a damn about it. And it caused quite a bit of conflict which required the police to uh, take certain measures which appeared to be like an overreach but at the end of the day we didn't really know what was happening where we were heading and there was a lot of uncertainty and the best thing to do given that we lived through the pandemic was to be conservative and to at least try and minimise the damage whilst we could until we could get a breakthrough to help us then rationalise what the next best option and next best step was for us to take. So it's all about rules, confidence, uh, con congruence and uh, we need to have a good look at our beliefs our values and the rules that we apply and these are the big challenges that parents have and families have because they need to pass those rules on they need to pass those values on and they need to pass those beliefs on to other generations as I've mentioned on other vlogs I remember my mother once telling me that we're all going to live in a world of compromise but there are some things that you simply can't compromise you can't compromise your standards you can't compromise your beliefs you can't compromise your values because if you compromise any of those three then it impacts your identity, it changes your purpose, and it alters your life and your satisfaction. It also alters your purpose. It changes, potentially, your calling. Whilst you can, um, you can um, swap out a few things here and there. As my mother said, she, she advised me, and I still remember it to this day, is that by all means, add things to your values, to your beliefs, to your rules. You know, learn from others. But what you mustn't do is swap out what you've been handed and replace it with other people's beliefs, other people's values, and other people's rules. Because the job of a family is to pass on the traditions, the customs, the rules, the beliefs, and the values to the next generation because all of these things have been pressure tested over time and are lovingly handed down. We don't know who the first Christian convert is in our family. But what we want to make sure is that we're not the last. We need to pass on all that we've had passed to us we need to protect, maintain, and communicate 
the truth to our children and to our children's children as best we can uh, with the minimum of fuss and not creating grief along the way. So, um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very, very powerful topic. And what Anthony Robbins talks about is the fact that a lot of the stuff that we have ru 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 uh, ruling our lives and guiding our lives are things that we've either been passed from other generations, so we have beliefs, values and rules that we've inherited from previous generations, or we've figured it out ourselves and adopted it ourselves. And Anthony Robbins says that from time to time, we need to go back and assess and review all of our beliefs, all of our values um, and our rules to make sure that they are contemporary, they are serving us and that they're not irrational. Some things we grow out of some of the rules that we have whilst we're growing up are there to protect us at a, at a particular season or a particular stage or a particular chapter of our lives. And it doesn't make sense as a 63 year old to be holding on to certain things that were passed to you when you were five years of age or 10 years of age or 18 years of age. You know, you can grow and develop and expand. You can think critically. You can change things as long as the change isn't a change for the sake of changing, but it's a improvement that is going to help you and your family get the most out of your life and out of the relationships that you have to each other. And we need to reprioritize the beliefs, the values, the rules and the needs that are important to us um, based on the dynamics that we have in our life, the age that we have, the job that we do. Um, we just can't be fixed in our mindset. We need to have a growth mindset, which means that we need to be variable and flexible in our approach. <coughs> Whilst we may hold on to the same life goals, we may hold on to the things that we want to achieve. Uh, there's always going to be hurdles, uh, humps in the road, potholes and challenges along the way, which are going to require us from time to time to change, as I said before, our approach and to be option thinkers to have plan B, C and D uh, because you're not always going to get the inside run to the finish. Uh, things happen along the way and you've got to be flexible. The most important thing, the most important lesson that Anthony Robbins talks about is being flexible in your approach and not too hard headed but also as we said before to review uh, where you are, where you want to go, and make the necessary empowering adjustments along the way. Anthony Robbins, when he talks about values,
talked about something this time round which I hadn't heard about or hadn't focused on or hadn't picked up last time when he did the seminar. And he talked about the fact that people have two types of values that you need to be aware of. We have moving towards values, values that attract us like a magnet. And we've also got moving away values, things that we want to stay clear of. And as Anthony Robbins talks about, he says that all people or most people that we'll come across are either an example of what we should be doing or a warning in terms of what we shouldn't be doing. And similarly, the big man says, you need to assess and you need to understand that you can have moving to values and moving away from values, just like we move towards pleasurable things. You can associate pleasure with certain values with certain outcomes. You can also attach pain to other things so that we can move away from them. Just like you say to yourself, I'll never ever smoke. I'll never ever take drugs. I'll never ever um, whatever. You now just add in your own, I'll never do this or I'll never do that because it's not the person who I am. So uh, once again, it's up to each and every one of us to uh, be more deliberate in what we do and how we live our lives and to um, identify these moving to and moving away from values and associate lots of pleasure and lots of excitement and lots of beauty to the moving to values and associated lots of pain and suffering to those values that we want to steer clear of and for also for our children and children's children to try and steer clear of because there are times of our lives times in our lives and Anthony Robbins talks about this he says it's never too late to change but there are times in our lives where you can't afford to make too many stupid mistakes uh, when you're in your 30s to 40s or your late 20s to mid 30s they're the times of your life that you need to be very very cautious because if you get into the wrong relationships if you're hanging out with the wrong people if you're making disempowering decisions at that time of your life chances are it can ruin your life forever and you can never get back on the path. When I was working at IBM back in the day when IBM was one of the most revered companies in the world, I remember the managers back then saying that there are certain things that you need to achieve, there are certain milestones that you need to achieve at a certain time of your life and I admit and I understand that times have moved on but back then they would say that if you haven't gotten married if you haven't started a family if you haven't become a manager if you haven't bought a house by the time you're 30 chances are you never will because it's not a priority. And as you get older, other things get in the way, other distractions get in your path. So it's important to get those massive milestones ticked off as early as you can in your life, simply because if you don't do them by a certain time, then chances are you're never going to get to the, to enjoy them because it's not going to be important enough for you to make the sacrifices 
that you need to make in order to get the outcomes that you need to achieve and to facilitate your ongoing growth and development. So some powerful things there. And uh, it's important for us to look at our values, look at our beliefs, look at our rules and to weight them, to put a hierarchy of value on those things so that we're doing the most important things as often as we can. We're majoring on the important things and not on the unimportant things. And the rules that we have, we need to look at those and ask ourselves, are these rules adding value? Are these rules empowering me? Or are these rules just my way of creating um, control in my life and just wiring me and wiring my family and wiring my teammates up for pain. Not all rules, not all values, not all beliefs have the same weighting. And as we said, it's more important to do the important things and to focus your efforts on those, th those things that have the biggest bang for the buck rather than to try and be perfect in every way you possibly can but by trying to be perfect in an imperfect world as we're saying you're probably going to end up being unhappy disappointed and uh, have your nose at a joint and not have very many friends So I think I'll leave it there. So thank you very much for joining me yet again on this episode of Jim's 5am Club where I've come down here to a park close to my home here in Winston Hills. I've parked the car just around the corner and I'll head back there now. But I love, I absolutely love putting together these vlogs where we document once and for all some impo important life hacks some important life hacks that uh, are time tested uh, pressure tested and have been handed down from generation to generation lovingly handed down in order to protect the members of the family and to help them have a better life and a life with fewer problems and consequences. So I look forward to coming to you again from another place with another message of empowerment where we will add another video, another episode to the series and slowly but surely get closer and closer to my goal of 365 videos um, for many one video a day so that uh, people can listen to and it can be a tribute to all the great work that Anthony Robbins has been able to pass on to millions of people over the years take care and we'll chat again all the best yasas and bye for now